Jack? Yes. It's that time again. Yes, it is. Are you ready? Can you handle it's, the truth? Can you? No, I can never <laughs> handle the truth. That is, that is why I lie to myself all the time. <laughs> My life is a web of lies, and I like it like that. <laughs> I occasionally get questions about the naming of things in my field, all right? And uh, let's take, for example, the names of the moon, the, of planets and their moons, all right? And had you ever wondered how we get these names? Not really, but I, I mean, I figured somebody looked up and said, I'm gonna call it that. <laughs> <laughs> because somebody I mean, if, did it right because for me it had been like you know jupiter and then jupiter a b c d <laughs> you know jupiter one jupiter two jupiter like yeah. you know that's because you have no imagination right there. It, well that goes so, without saying. so here we go so the planets are named they all have roman latin names basically okay and so they're named after sort of roman gods Mercury, you know, the messenger god. Mercury is the fastest moving planet. Venus is quite beautiful in the evening sky. Um, that object got named for Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. Um, and then also in the sky we have Mars, which is red, the color of blood. So the warrior god got uh, named after war. that planet. Or that planet got named after the warrior god. And let's keep going. You have Jupiter, um, Saturn. The biggest, and those the are the plant, those are the plants known to the ancients, and then later would be discovered Neptune, uh, Uranus, and Neptune. Right. And the thing about Uranus was, both down it was under. the first. <laughs> it was the first time anyone discovered a planet. It was William Herschel, back in the okay. in the seventeen hundreds, and it was like all the other planets were just known because they're just in the sky. There's not the person who discovered them. Anyone who looked up noticed them. So no one is on record for discovering Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, or Saturn. But Uranus got discovered, and it got discovered by William Herschel. And no one had discovered, and therefore no one had actually named a planet in modern times. Wow, he and picked so he, a good one. He, he tried to figure out what to name it. Mm -hmm. And so, so he did the right thing. Okay, he named it after his principal funder. <laughs> That's what scientists do. <laughs> wow, Our artists do the same thing. They draw in the in the in the background the the, the benefactor or whatever you know the sponsor of right. the painting. This it makes the, the rich folks feel good. Right. So uh, so he he named this new star after King George. Okay, all right. No, that's the King George that's of the American Revolution, that same King George, because this is the late, 18, the late 1700s. And so, so that's the same George that John Hancock signed his big signature large enough for him to read. The and same so, George in, the, in Hamilton? That same George, that, that correct. Same, oh. That same King George. So, Who, by the way, that King George, God, could he was a show stealer. <laughs> <laughs> he was good. <laughs> So I have books from that period. So late 1700s, early 1800s, where the, the enumeration of planets is very clear. It's, and we know Earth is a planet, right? So it's Mercury, Venus, Earth, that since Copernicus, we knew that Earth is a planet as an object that goes around the sun. So we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. George. And George. George, <laughs> of course. And George. Right. I yes. have books that list the planets in that order with those names. And this oh. was, you look back and say, what the, but what, what, you know? And yeah. so, so. <laughs> God, we should have left that. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that would be the best thing in the world. One day. We are going to get to George. <laughs> <laughs> With our greatest of technologies. With our greatest of technology. We shall one day set foot upon George. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so or he, we could have said instead of Uranus, I'm sorry, Uranus, we could have went with George's ass. <laughs> 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 ah! Planet! Oh my! 
<laughs> Planet George's ass. <laughs> you gotta say it with a British accent, right? And, exactly. And the, pl Planet George's ass. Mm. <laughs> Arse, I'm sorry. I'm so terribly sorry. <laughs> I say, one day we shall get to George's arse. I say. I say. <laughs> Old chap. Oh, boy. One day we'll get there. So looking forward to being firmly planted in George's ass. <laughs> okay, stop. That's All enough. Right. Okay. I... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, so it would take a little while, but clearer heads would prevail. And how do you tell the discoverer of a planet that he has to unname it after his king? This is very tentative, you know, diplomatic moments here. And so finally we landed on Uranus, Uranus, which from what I have read is similarly pronounced in, um, in both Greek and, and, and Latin, in, in Roman, um, uh, it, they, they it's the same word, all right? So it's actually a crossover name between the, the Roman and the Greek, okay? That's cool. Uh, so that, I'll show up later in a minute. So, so, and after that, we get to Neptune. That is a, you know, Roman god of the seas and this sort of right. thing. And then when Pluto was discovered, when everyone believed it was a planet, the, um, Pluto is the god of the underworld and it's Roman. So right. there you have it. All right, so you might say, well, what about the Greeks? In the Western traditions, they were pretty significant in what they contributed to all of this. It's not yeah. just the Romans. Right. Romans are like Johnny come lately compared to the Greeks. Yeah. And so we said, okay, in our Western astronomical traditions, we will honor not only the Romans with planet names, we will honor the Greeks with moon names. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There we go. So all mm -hmm. moons... Essentially, I, there's some exceptions here I can get to. All moons in the solar system are named after Greek characters in the life of the Greek counterpart to the Roman god after whom the planet is named. Gotcha. gotcha. Are you with me on that? I'm with you on that. So basically, you take the Roman, all right, you find a god... And then you say, okay, how does that translate into a Greek god? And now we got a name for a moon. No. I mean, no. right. No, 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 no. You, you, got, you, got, you got almost all of it. Almost. Okay. So you got the Roman god. Right. Ask, what is the Greek god counterpart to that Roman god? Okay. Now you look at characters in the life of the Greek god. Ah, gotcha. So and you those are the and, names of the moons. Right, because otherwise you would end up with just two gods. Two on gods and with two sides different... of the coin. Right. And yeah, but, who is the but one would be a planet can... and one would be a moon, and that wouldn't right. be right. That wouldn't be right. Yeah, you'd right. be pissing off some powerful god. Right. Yes, exactly. So let me give you a list of some of these moons. Okay. Mercury doesn't have any moons, and uh, neither does Venus. Okay. And let's skip over Earth for a moment. We'll get back to Earth. So what's next? Mars. Mars has two moons, and they're they're pretty sorry moons. Just they're, they're like a dozen miles across. They're oh. not even spherical. Oh, they're, they're embarrassments. Basically, they really are. Yeah, people wondering whether they were just captured asteroids. I was going to say that sounds like a rock. That just yeah, it sounds. Like <laughs> that doesn't really sound like a moon. It sounds like a rock that got lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a wayward rock. A wayward rock. Somebody <laughs> lost their rocks. Exactly. <laughs> so, so the Martian moons are called Phobos and Deimos. Phobos and Deimos. Yes, Phobos and Deimos. As I have read in the in the in the Greek traditions, that's the name of the each of the two horses that drives the chariot of Mars across the sky. I got you, Phobos and Demos. Yes. Which, by the way, Demos is a really cool name. So. Demos, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it totally waste, is wasted on a rock. I got to tell you, <laughs> it is <laughs> as cool of a name as Demos is. You wasted it on a rock. Yeah, it looks like an Idaho potato. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, it's embarrassing, but it's all it's got. So, in fact, uh, one of the uh, Mars rovers, I forgot which, was in the path of a Phobos or Demo, a, a Phobos eclipse, right? And so, so, so it's got a picture of Phobos passing in front of the sun. 
And it's just this outline of an Idaho potato deep <laughs> within the full disc of the sun. It's embarrassing. Yeah, that is. It yeah. was like, it couldn't even cover the whole sun because it's so little. And it's not even round. So anyway, let's keep going. So what comes after Mars? We get to Jupiter. Uh -huh. So uh, Jupiter, it's four brightest moons were named, they're called the Galilean moons. Galileo first saw them through his telescope and then described them. But this is, uh, let me remember, we have Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and I forgot one. Uh, Callisto, Ganymede, Io, and... Don't look at me. <laughs> I hope you're not helping me. Help, help a brother out, I, yeah, I hope you're not waiting for me to jump in. <laughs> you Once you got past Ganymede, I was just like, oh, shoot. <laughs> How could I forget Europa? My gosh. Right. Which exactly. was the star of the movie 2010. So um, uh, Io, Callisto, Ganymede, and Europa. Those are the four biggest moons of Jupiter's, I lost count, is probably near somewhere around 100 moons or more. Because yeah. every time we get closer to it, we see other tiny little rocks. And what distinguishes a moon from just like a not moon? You know, if it's just, right. if it's orbiting and it's bigger than a dust particle, is right. it a moon? Can you be a moon no matter how little you are? This right. is a debate, and I'm not going to bring that up here. But I'm just going to say those are the four big ones, and those are the ones that kind of really matter. When you, when you see Jupiter through a telescope, there they are. Okay? Nice. And there's four of them, and they just they go around Jupiter. And Galileo, when he first saw them, he said, oh, there's stars near Jupiter. And then he looked later on, and he said, wait, the stars have moved. Moved. He called them the, Gal the, 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 the Jupiter stars, right? And Because wh why would you think you're discovering a moon? This right. isn't, you're coming out of, out of nowhere and landing on this information. And so he was able to see that they moved around. They orbited Jupiter. Oh, right. my gosh. That meant the Earth was not the center of all motion. Look at that. Yeah. This, this was devastating to people who wished it were otherwise. And the Jupiter stars sounds like a really bad basketball team. <laughs> the Jupiter star. <laughs> really, it does. <clears throat> it's, it's a bad any kind of team, right? Yes, exactly. Bad yeah. soccer team. Right? right. So now let me take you to Uranus. Right. Okay. There was a pact. So as not to piss off the Brits, who were very powerful in the late eight, the 1700s. Okay. All right. They're one of the most powerful forces the world had ever seen particularly with their naval power. Okay. So, are you going to piss off the Brits and King George? What are you going to do? So here's what they did. Here's what they did. We said, okay, we will make an exception of the Greek rule for the planet Uranus. And we will name the moons of Uranus after fictional characters in the plays of Shakespeare. Oh. Okay, I have never heard this. That's ever. That's, so this threw a bone back to the Brits so that they could rest easily that their king was stripped from the name of the planet and it, had, and it, and it became a, a Roman god. Consul uh, wait a minute. A constellation prize. No. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, Chuck, dear. that was good. Chuck, that was good. <laughs> I sailed that. I gotta, hand, I, I, I gotta <laughs> hand it to you. So, what are some names? We have Portia, P O R T I A. Remember Portia oh, from your Shakespeare? Okay. Um, there are a lot of characters from A Midsummer's Night Dream because that's a very quite a fantastical storytelling going on there. Uh, among the moon names, we have uh, Umbriel, okay, Titania, Miranda. Miranda is the lead character in The Tempest. Okay, we have Ariel, Oberon, all right, so Puck. Oh. Puck Desdemona, all, all these moons have names drawn from Shakespeare. No, that is, I mean, that is really stunning. Cause I mean, I can't believe that that's just something that everybody should know. Cause it's so like almost, it feels so random. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's a little bit of history. It's, a, yeah, it's it fun is. history. It's, it's not no. science so much as it is just, it, it's no. the intersection of science taking place embedded in our culture yeah 
Yeah. So, so now you go out to the outer planets. By the way, Pluto, the first moon was discovered around Pluto. It was named uh, Sharon, or I think in the Greek is Karen. Uh, and Karen is the ferry boat driver who carries your soul across the river Styx to Hades. Makes sense. Pluto, god of the underworld. Well, yeah, it's, but it's Hades. That's right. the... So you go to the Greek side of that. So right. make a, a long story short. So this is the, the, the origin stories of the names of the moons. And in the very later years, when there are many more moons discovered and you run out of ca incidental characters in the life of Greek and Roman um, gods. By the way, we had many because they led complex and interesting social lives, right? So there's a lot of characters you could draw from. But in modern times, a more inclusive sensibility has descended upon us, and so now there are there are there are names of of of, of gods and other um, uh, other spiritual beings, fictional beings in from other cultures, not just Greek and Roman. When we fully flush out all the names of all the moons, so that's a that's a that's that's solar system moons one hundred and one, Chuck. Oh man, that's I'm telling you that was really cool. Uh, however. From now on, I'm sorry. I I have to call Uranus George's ass. <laughs> that's, that's it. There you go, Chuck. We got to call it quits there. Okay. That All right. Great. Another Star Talk explainer. Just just blowing Chuck's mind. That's what I live for, Chuck. <laughs> Good. I'm always glad it happens. <laughs> and the first mission to land on Uranus. That's it. We will name features of Uranus George's ass. I'll strive to make that happen. All right. Star Talk Explainers. Keep looking up.